Hey guys, I am at the Zebulon, the world famous Zebulon in the heart of Silver Lake, California, culture capital of the world. Why am I here? Well, there's one reason that I'm here. There's actually two reasons that I'm here, but I'm going to share this one with you first. Yeah, you know it. Bob Log with the Kevin Dowling Fitness Hour. You ever see somebody smoke cigarettes and do yoga and other kind of physical scrap apparatus. Yeah, you're going to see it tonight. Bob Log the third with Kevin Dowling Fitness Hour right here in that door. Get down here right now. Anyway, what are we really here for? We are here for sound check and we are here to solve such a tiny problem that is infinitesimally huge, infinitesimally little, 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 rented lips, huge. Now, most of you guys don't know huge, so I'm going to have to break it down for you. Do you remember when I used to talk about palm trees? Palmero. Palmero. I used to move palm trees. And I used to move all this traffic that's going by, and I'm going to have to set down the volume on the background so it's going to make me sound like a robot. Yeah. Anyway, I told you that I learned a lot about palm trees from cranes because I used to run cranes. And I gave you a couple lessons. Hang on. Chick Flick Teal Pointer was making out with the Bob Log poster there. Anyway, I told you when I used to run cranes that the principle is you have a structure, a lattice structure that works together. So when the crane picks up something heavy, everything comes together and holds it up. Now, if you are picking something very heavy, and I take a sledgehammer once your boom is loaded and I hit the boom in one spot, all of the load momentarily goes to that spot and defeats the ability of the structure to spread the load out evenly. If you deform the structure in that one spot by hitting it, what ends up happening is called elastic failure. In other words, something bends beyond the little cells or whatever scientific jargon you want to read on wiki to pretend you're smart. Anyway, elastic failure is when you are turning and you're backing out and you don't see that telephone pole in your bumper hooks on the telephone pole and reaps out this way no matter how hard you pull on it with a chain so your mom won't see it. That is elastic failure, son. Now, we move that into palm trees. The palm trees are helical, and because they're helical, they're fronds or leaves, as you may call them. When the wind blows, they twist up to reduce surface drag, the area of surface drag, and then once that's wound up, it transfers a bend load down the trunk of the palm tree. So the palm tree is swaying back and forth. Now, things that sway back and forth when you bend them, they want to split like celery. Celery, the vascular elements of celery, go up and down axially. And so when you side those celery, it splits. But a palm tree has a helical vascular system. So when the tree is going back and forth, the helix stops the splitting. The band load is buffered in the lower part of the trunk where the oldest cells are with the thickest parenchyma walls. So the buffering capacity or the ability to move becomes less nearer the ground. That is how palm trees handle wind loading, which is exactly the opposite of how trees handle wind loading. You are welcome. You learned from a palmero. Now, how does that go to a guitar, which is what we're going to talk about today? Now, we've talked about bridges on guitars, and we've talked about sanding bridges so you don't have a gap in the floating bridge where there's stuff underneath there because when you strum the strings, the bridge is there to transfer the sound to the arch top, which vibrates. F holes get in the way. They're the worst thing we've ever seen come into a guitar. Thank you, Lloyd Lore, for making us think that they were violin looking so we could pay more money for the same thing that was sonically less efficient. Anyway, I've built a guitar. The sustained string 
the sustain on the string that goes whoop, 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 the 12th to 14th thing. You know the call and repeat thing. You know the male and female thing that I want to talk about here because this is a family channel. Anyway, I'm wasting time so I can dig in my pocket and know for something that I can show you. That's right. When this artist is sliding up and down whoop, 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 with one of these, He's reporting that the sustain on the high E string is just not there. I've looked at it, I've tilted things, I've built shims, all of that, and guess what? It hit me today, what's wrong? And it's a little tiny piece of rubber under the license plate, and you're gonna say, there is no license plate on a guitar. Well, guess what, son? There is a license plate on my guitars because we are, that's right, Paul Miro, junk pile guitars. Now let's get in here and look at this guitar and get things right and then in a little bit we will nice hair huh? Yeah I wanted to give you that shot. Nice profile. Put me in Hollywood. Somebody please stop me. Anyway yeah that's right. We're going to see Bob Log but we're going to warm up and get our physique right. Yeah this doesn't just happen with Kevin Dowling Fitness Hour. Let's get inside here and get to work before we play. Okay guys, we are set up right outside the door of the sound stage where you, you take your all your scrap apparatus in that door, in this door right here. Can't even see me, hey! But this is like the coolest card I've ever seen. It's got a wood top, it's got a drawer. They said something about putting ashtrays on it or something like that, but anyway. Let's get to reality here. First off, ooh, look at this. Look at this. Don't covet this. It's perfect, it's called a vanity. It holds my fancy high dollar pistol, whatever with all my stuff. Fits right in there. Got a couple of bean bags, holds the neck, support, all that stuff. But here is the culprit. Now. I want to tell you a couple things here that it just hit me in a dream what's happening. The sustain on this string right here just dies out. Everything else is fine. It's got a Curtis Novak pickup. That is not the problem, I guarantee you. Well, let's get a piece of sandpaper and I'll kind of get this thing set up and show you what's happening here or not happening. All right, here we go. Now, I've made an episode I'm gonna find a link to it right up there right about now where I talk to you about the importance of making sure when you put a floating bridge on an arch top that there's not a bunch of gaps there so how you avoid that and make the floating bridge fit the exact arch top is to tape down a piece of sandpaper 400 600 grit tape off your F holes and stuff, get all this scrap apparatus off of here, and you just take this and go back and forth. Now they have some kind of fancy gadget that you can use the posts on your thumb wheels to do that, but you want to maintain even pressure and go back and forth so the bridge hits right here. Before I paint these dots on, I know from measuring out my intonation, have you seen the scale and intonation episode? You're really going to want to see that one. It tells you how to lay out things based on the 12th fret, the nut, and this. So we know the intonation is correct and we put dots there because face it, this is a junky guitar. It kicks, but it is a junky guitar. So the first thing we do is we wanna make sure that this fits here because here's what happens. I talked about Lloyd Lore putting F holes on these things. There used to be sound holes up here on these guitars, I think I've got an arch top coming with a sound hole up here, which is kind of rare, but vibrate, strings to the bridge, properly sanded to here, goes down into the body, resonates, comes back out right there. That's how this works. Now, I was talking all kinds of garbage about cranes and palm trees and stuff before. But here's what I'm getting at. This is a very thick top. This is nothing that Ken Parker is gonna make or somebody like that, Megan Wells, where it's very thin because 
It's like a violin. The thinner it is, the more resonance it has. There's ceiling going on. There's all kinds of stuff. And I did an episode about the Mississippi mudslide and showed you how to seal something and then put you could put mud on it or whatever. That episode is right up there right about now. But what happens here is when I strum this, the vibration, I can still feel it. The vibration comes down to here and the sustain is, is all about what's going to interrupt it. Is there a gap here? Is it going to hit the sound hole and die out right away? The problem that's been reported with this guitar is that the sustain on the high E string is just not there. Now, we can take and pull up the pickup just by putting a shim under it, we can grind the shim or sand the shim so this side is up a little bit more. There's a lot we can do there. But at the end of the day, what we really, really need to think about is there something that's causing the vibration on this string to dampen off and die out early. It's certainly not the pickup. It's a Curtis Novak pickup, best you can get for this application. So something is killing this string and stopping it from vibrating. Okay, I want to take a really, really close look at this plate. This plate is here, it's a pit guard. It looks cool, it's part of the theming. Up here is a hole where a pickup is meant to be. Um, this body was a second, it had holes drilled in the wrong places, all kinds of extra holes. These are wood relics from where Fred McDowell was picked up by George Mitchell to record him in 1967. So all that aside, I want you to notice right here that the end of the floating bridge is touching that license plate. Next thing I want you to notice is this side of the pit guard up in here and especially right here where that chick flick teal screw is, there are rubber grommets under there. Now these rubber grommets, I've told you about them before. You used to drill a hole in the firewall of your pickup truck and then you'd run the wire from your AM to FM converter, your 8-track tape player, whatever. But the wire would rub the edge of that hole and bear off and then the next thing you know, it's shorted out. So they made these little things. You'd drill the hole bigger than it needs to be and you would push one in and there's a ring in the middle of the grommet that rides the metal part and it would stop everything from rubbing bare wire against metal. I use these, I cut them in half. The one up here is a full-sized one, but the rest of them are cut in half. The reason I put them in is if you put metal against wood and it's vibrating, after a while the screws are gonna come loose, or worse yet, if they're in a line like these, it'll get a running crack going and you don't want that. So, two mistakes here. Outside of adjusting this some more or putting a shim uh, under something to get it closer. What's going on here is I have made the mistake of letting the metal touch the bridge and there's a rubber grommet right here underneath the metal where it touches the bridge. So, hit the string. It's like a shock absorber. It deadens the vibration of the string. This string vibrates a lot less than this one. You see it? Look at that. So this dies out. If this string dies out quickly, there's nothing that the pickup can do about that. The pickup is just only as good as the vibration. So we're going to take this apart here. We're going to pull out the grommets at least here, anywhere near the pickup, and give it a whirl and sound check. Okay, so we're going to take off this chick flick teal screw, and luckily I have this magnetic pickup over here that I can use as a part tray. Look at that. There is nothing like working on stuff right outside the Zebulon soundstage. I swear. Look at that pop-up. Okay, now I'm going to pop out that grommet. That right there, people, is the culprit. Now, I'm, a, I'm going to, since I don't have a grinder here, a way to do this, I am basically going to pull this out like this, come to the R, 
and whip it around here and get this license plate away from the edge of the floating bridge and that will help okay so what we did here was we pulled the bridge back we took the grommet out and that way the string wasn't deadening excuse me sir I'm trying to work on a guitar here if you don't mind Was that awesome or what? Probably or what, because I don't know, because I shot the end right after I shot the beginning. But hey, you know what? If it's Bob Log the third, you know it's gonna be awesome. So hey, glad I could help you with my mistakes so you can look like the hero. Give me a like if you haven't subscribed, if you have not. Not only do you see the best artists, but you see the best mess ups in the world you will learn things here with me, a fake luthier, to send you to a real luthier to empty your wallet out appropriately. Hey, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I will see you next time.